We are going to make these lemon butter meatballs with the spinach orzo. It sounds delicious. I do already have a pound of ground beef. You could use ground chicken, you could use ground turkey. If you're doing that, you might want to add a fat to it just so that you've got a little bit more to work with. We are choosing ground beef. We love ground beef. It's a great option for a recipe like this. I believe this one is 80-20. The recipe calls for a full stick of butter to go in your meatballs. I think that's crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna add like a tablespoon. Okay, I did soften it up just a tad. Let's go ahead and put that in there. You could add more butter if you wanna add more butter. I think this is gonna be enough. I'm adding about two cloves of minced garlic. Feel free to mince your own if that's what you prefer. I'm adding one half cup of panko. Use whatever kind of breadcrumbs or panko you prefer. And I'm gonna make a mess. One half teaspoon or so of salt. Just add a little bit of flavor. And about a half teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. I am running low on onion powder. Need to add that to the list. So let's mix all these and start making meatballs. Okay, I've got one lemon that we are going to try and thinly slice. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Oh, that's too thin. And I have a few little pats of butter here in this, I have a few little pats of butter here in this pan and I'm actually currently self-cleaning my oven. Hopefully it's gonna be done soon so we can continue this. But we are just going to take this, these slices of, what is this? Lemon, and put it here in our pan. Now you could throw this in the oven if you have an oven safe pan. Since my oven is currently still doing its self-clean thing, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go in the oven right now, so we might do this part on the stove top. Okay, so I've got some butter in here. We've got the lemon in here. Let's take this over to the stove top. We're actually gonna cook this for a minute, then add the meatballs to it and cook the meatballs in it. Okay, I have another pan here. You could do this in a pot if you want to, but I think I wanna cook the orzo in this pot and then top with the meatballs and we'll serve from the table. So that's why I'm doing it in this one. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter into my pan and a little bit of garlic and we're gonna saute that for just a few minutes before we add the other ingredients. So about two garlic cloves. And actually, before I take this over there, because it's gonna move kinda quickly, Let's get all of our other ingredients organized. We are going to need about two and a half cups of bone broth or chicken broth. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this and add my other liquid to it as well. I have some more homemade if I need to add. I also need two cups of milk. We're adding about two tablespoons of lemon juice. Let me just give that a stir before we add anything else. And I need to go check on this stuff over on the stove. A pinch of salt to this. And the other thing that we are going to need is Parmesan cheese and spinach. So the recipe calls for two cups of spinach. I have about a cup left in this, so that's all we're gonna use and it will be totally fine. So we've got our lemon pan ready to go and I will end up making the meatballs and putting those in with the lemons and letting those cook. But I do wanna go ahead and get started on the orzo. So let's turn our stove on. It's already hot because my oven was on the self clean. And we wanna go ahead and melt up that butter and the garlic. Okay, so just a quick saute on that garlic, about two to three minutes at the most. Let's add in all of our liquid and bring that up to a boil. Now, while I'm waiting on that to come up to a boil, I'm gonna go ahead and make up these meatballs and put them in the pan with the lemons and they're gonna cook in there like that. You can cook them in the oven if you want to. I love the saute that they get if you cook them right on the stove top though. So the, I'm primarily gonna do that. And I'm just using this one and a half inch, sorry, one and a half tablespoon scoop that I have. 
Let's cover these for just a couple minutes as they get going. Y'all, every time I forget that this pan doesn't have a lid. Now, as I begin to flip these, I still want the um, lemon to be in the pan, but I'm gonna move them to the side just a bit. I want to make sure that I get a good sear. I love a good sear on meatballs. Okay, we've got some stuff going on over here. Let's turn this down. Now we are going to add in the orzo. I have about a pound of orzo. Now that we've got a nice boil, we can put that in. And just stir that together. Now we are gonna cover this and cook for about 10 minutes, but I will take the lid off and stir because we don't want the orzo to stick. So I'll stir occasionally. Still working on the meatballs over here, letting those finish up as well. This is smelling really, really good, you guys. Oh, perfecto. Okay, so let's add in our Parmesan cheese and our spinach. The Parmesan cheese is gonna be around a third cup. And I think I will also just save a little bit for topping because I think it will be really pretty with this on the top. Mix all that together. Let's add in that spinach and let that wilt. Now I'm just gonna top this with the meatballs and we will be ready to serve. I did already try one of the meatballs and it is so delicious. You get a little hint of that lemon that it cooked in, which is perfect, and the garlic. The flavors are awesome. Let's try the orzo. A Little bit of spinach in there, Parmesan in there, cooked in that rich milk and uh, broth. It's really good. And it's cooked to the perfect amount of time. It's not underdone, it's not overdone, it's really good. We just got done with dinner and I have some thoughts on this one. I think my husband and I both agree, it does not need that much Parmesan cheese. The Parmesan cheese, it, although it's very good and you are getting this one element of flavor, the Parmesan cheese kinda takes away from the lemon and I think that you could use very little Parmesan or none at all and you're getting that really rich lemon butter. So I, I personally think I would not use it at all and maybe just use it as garnish on the top if I were to do this one again, which I probably would do this one again because it's very good. I just got home from picking up our Sam's Club grocery order and I really need to put all of these groceries away. But before I do that, I'm gonna get dinner put in the crock pot so that it can get started because it is 1.30, it's starting to get a little bit late for a crock pot meal, okay? So we are going to get this meat cut up just a little bit. I'm using a beef stew meat, which is fantastic for this recipe, but I do like to cut it up just a little bit because it's in really large chunks, which is fine, except that we're using it for Greek bowls tonight and I want them to be a little bit smaller. Also, just so you're aware, I am, uh, this is a 2.82 pound uh, thing of beef stew meat and I'm using the whole thing. That is not what we would normally do for our family. That's actually a lot of beef stew meat, but I am actually gonna take dinner to a friend tonight. She has been sick. So we're just cutting this into more like bite-sized pieces. I mean, these some of these are really large, like that's a pretty large piece there, which is totally fine, depending on what you're using it for. All right now, keep in mind, this is almost three pounds of meat. So I'm using kind of a lot of olive oil, okay? I'm using around a fourth cup or so, and that's not what I would normally do, just because normally I would make about a pound, but we're using extra olive oil because we've got quite a bit in there. Also, normally I would go with about a tablespoon of, um, what is this, lemon juice, but I'm gonna go with just a little over three tablespoons of lemon juice. Let's go three and a half. And that is because obviously I'm using a lot more of the beef. And then the next ingredient is salt. Don't skimp on your salt, guys. It's really going to 
enhance the flavor of this. It's gonna pull out all those really, really rich flavors of the beef. So I'm probably using three teaspoons or so, probably about a teaspoon per pound. I'm gonna use oregano and I use a lot of this, probably around two tablespoons of oregano. Lots of oregano, okay? You're gonna get really good flavor. This is gonna be so delicious. I've made this so many times and it is absolutely delicious every single time. Let's toss all of that around, making sure all those flavors get on all of the beef. All right, now normally this is a low and slow recipe for me, but considering the time of day that it is, we are gonna start this on high and try for about two hours on high. Then I will turn it down to low. But just so you're aware, normally I do low for about six hours and that works perfectly for this. All right, here in my Instant Pot, I have six cups of rinsed white rice. This is just a long grain white rice. I did rinse it thoroughly. That is something that I always do. You do not have to do that, but that's just a preference thing on how we love our rice cooked. So we've got six cups. I know that's a lot, but like I said, I am taking some to a friend tonight. So I wanna make sure there is plenty of rice. Obviously you do not need an Instant Pot to make rice. I'm making a lot of it and this is just such an easy way to do it. So I'm doing a one-to-one -one ratio. You only need one-to-one -one if you're making this in your Instant Pot. So we're gonna add six cups of liquid and I'm gonna do about half chicken bone broth and the other half coconut milk. So this is spilling over the side. Two cups here. And actually I'm gonna do four cups of chicken broth because that's what should be in this container. Yeah, right at four cups. And then I'll add in the coconut milk, which if you haven't done milk, coconut milk in your rice, it is so delicious. I have this coconut milk from Thrive, but I have several kinds that I've used before. This is gonna be right around two cups. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add this whole thing in there. Now, coconut milk does settle. You see how it's kind of solid here on the top? That's completely okay. We can just mix it together. Okay, I usually do try and break that up a little bit. It will combine, you know, once you turn your Instant Pot on, but I usually like to try and just break it up at least a little bit and mix everything together. I do also like to add in about a half teaspoon of salt per cup of rice, especially if you're cooking it in water. I'm going to pressure cook. The valve is sealed right now, so you want it to be sealed. We are going to turn this on. Why is it not turning on? Oh, it's not plugged in. That's the problem. It is crazy. You do need power for these appliances. Okay, now we can pressure cook for nine minutes and we are gonna let it naturally release as well. Okay, in this bowl, I have about one half of an English cucumber that I just used my cheese grater on and shredded it up. Now we're going to add in, oh, I also topped it with just about a tablespoon of olive oil. That's just a preference thing. We're adding about two cups of uh, plain Greek yogurt. And I've made this recipe so many times, I really don't measure it at all anymore. It's completely just eyeballing. I like to add a pinch of salt, make sure that we have good flavor. And then I also like to add some minced garlic. I know that not everybody adds this to theirs, but I do think that it's really delicious with some minced garlic in there. So I'm making quite a bit. I'm adding a little more than a teaspoon of minced garlic. Now this is another ingredient that a lot of the recipes don't call for. It is red wine vinegar. And I'm telling you, this makes all the difference. So I end up adding about a tablespoon or so. If you wanna take your tzatziki flavor to the next level, this is absolutely the way to do it. Add in some red wine vinegar. Okay, I also like to add a touch of lemon juice, which if you added as much red wine vinegar, you don't have to add quite as much, but let's go with right about a tablespoon of lemon juice. You can always taste and add more. And then I absolutely have to add dill. This is a necessary ingredient and I personally love dill. So I probably go overboard on the dill like a tablespoon. <laughs> So if you're not as much of a fan of dill, you can scale that back a bit. Start to mix all of these ingredients together. Okay, just by looking at it, I do feel like it needs a little bit more olive oil. So I'm going maybe like half teaspoon more. It really doesn't need too much more. 
I just, like I said, I've made this so many times, I know exactly what it's supposed to look like. And that's about it right there. I mean, you can add in more, but obviously taste it, see what you think because each person you know, likes theirs a little bit different. I feel like the level of salt that's in this one is perfect right now. So I'm not gonna mess with that at all, but this is about what it's gonna look like. All right, another preference that I have for these is I love to saute up some green pepper and some onion. I think it is so delicious to have this as an option to go in the bowls. I also like to cut up some tomatoes and some Kalamata olives and have all of that ready to go. I'm telling you, the ingredients that, the, the great thing about this is that all the different ingredients you can add, you get to change it up, you can put on what you love on it. Oh, and feta cheese. Definitely need to have the feta cheese out, but that doesn't really take any prep work. All right, so this is what we what it looks like when we put the bowls together. We've I did some peppers and some onions. We've got the Kalamata olives here, the tomatoes, I've got the beef, the steak here. We've got rice at the bottom and then the feta and the tzatziki. And you have a nice bowl filled with all the good stuff. We are going to make French dip style stuffed peppers. These are really easy to make and they're really fun. It's a great play on the regular French dip sandwich. Maybe you want your carbs to be more vegetables, less bread. This is a great way to do it. Okay, for these stuffed green peppers, I am going to cut these in half and then take out the center of them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get them prepped and ready and get them into a baking dish. That's what it's called. So I usually can just use a spoon for this. My, my melon baller would actually be really good for this, but it's currently dirty. So you just wanna get that inside out of there. And yeah, there's my spoon working for me. So sometimes I just have to go right in here with a knife, but other than that, the spoon works totally fine. All right, let's arrange these peppers into this container. And these are, will, will be ready so that when we're ready to put the Philly cheesesteak stuff in there, these are ready to go. So I'm just gonna set that to the side, then I can clean all this up. Let's get everything prepped to go along with the French dip. So I'm gonna start by slicing up some mushrooms. Obviously you can buy them pre-sliced. I actually think that I ordered in my grocery order pre-sliced mushrooms, but they must have been out and just subbed for these, which is totally fine. And then we, we are not gonna be adding onions to ours, but you should feel free to do that. I actually have a shallot over there. I might add that in just for that kind of like oniony type of uh, texture and flavor. My husband doesn't mind shallots for some reason. All right, I think that's good for the mushrooms. We are using a thin sirloin tip sandwich steak. Uh, basically, you just want to have some sort of sirloin that you can cut into smaller pieces. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's already pretty thin, but I'm going to cut it into strips so that it will be completely ready to go. Cut thin, that's the biggest thing. The thinner it is, the better it's going to be for something like this. So I like to keep the pieces nice and thin. Hopefully you can see how thin these are. A good knife helps in this process too. I always personally cut um, against the grain as well. I never cut with the grain when I'm cutting for something like this. I just feel like it makes it so much more tender um, and easier to chew and cut and all that kind of stuff. And you know, when actually making the Philly cheese, like the actual cooking of the steak, there's so many different ways that you can go about that recipe. If you have one that you love, go for it. You do not have to use the exact one that I'm gonna be using. Okay, so the steak is all cut, ready to go. Mushrooms are cut, ready to go. So pretty much everything else at this point, at this stage is gonna happen over on the stove top. I'm gonna turn my oven or my stove top on and get this butter melting. So we're actually gonna do a little bit of butter and a little bit of olive oil into my pan. And as that's melting and starting to cook up, we're gonna add in the mushrooms so we can get those cooking and those are not gonna take very long. We just want them to soften up just a little bit. Okay, let's also add in a little bit of garlic so that can saute. You add whatever amount of garlic you like. 
Most of the recipes don't call for this, but I like to add a little bit of coconut aminos and a little bit of Worcestershire. I don't know, I feel like it just tastes really good to add those two flavors to this. Now before I add those in though, I am gonna add a little bit of salt. And then once we put the pepper in, we're gonna add a little bit more, um, once we put the pepper in, once we put the steak in, we're gonna add a little bit more of salt and pepper. But I like to saute in some soy sauce or coconut aminos and a little bit of Worcestershire because it just adds such good flavor. I'll probably add a touch more once we put that beef in as well. All right, I'm gonna crank up my heat because I want the uh, beef to get a little bit of a sear on it. So I'm gonna push this stuff just to the side a bit. So this is not gonna take long to cook at all, just a couple of minutes. Our meat mixture is about ready. Let's take some provolone cheese and we're gonna put a piece inside, kind of, let's shove that in there there. All right, we're gonna put a piece inside of each one of the bell peppers as best we can. This one I might need to kind of tear apart. Now we're gonna take a little bit of that uh, Philly cheese and put them on the ends, put some on the inside of each bell pepper. You wanna get a good amount inside of each one. You can even fill it to overflowing a little bit. Okay, this one is not standing up right, so I'm gonna turn it so it can lean. There we go. Okay, so we wanna keep all this inside of there. I don't want it falling out. Now I'm gonna do something, again, the recipe doesn't call for this, but because I have these nice, uh, this nice sauce from the Worcestershire and the coconut aminos, I'm adding a little bit of this sauce to the inside of each one. Just, I just think it's a good idea. I think this recipe is already posted, but the other part, the leftover part on this is going in a different recipe. I will have that video linked. It's in a biscuit dough video. Let's take another piece of provolone and we're gonna put it over the top of each one. Oh yeah. And it's just gonna melt over the top. It's so good. These are gonna bake for about 15 to 20 minutes in my 400 degree preheated oven. Okay, I'm going to attempt to move these to this serving platter without ruining them. Okay, let's cut into one so we can see how it's looking. Lots of cheese. Oh, dropping stuff. We've got pepper, we've got cheese, we've got steak, and it looks really hot. And we've got flavor. This is good. If you wanna do Philly cheese, but you wanna skip out on some of the breading, this is the way to do it. It's the same exact flavors, but you got that green pepper, which a lot of time you add to Philly cheese anyway. Very good. Our verse today comes from John 10, 7 through 9. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. I hope that you enjoyed this week's video. We loved all of these recipes and I hope that you're gonna love them just like we did. If you want more inspiration, I have tons of it here on my channel. Check out the video that I have listed above. That one is the perfect one to watch next.